Today I'd like to talk to you about some things to consider when you are looking for an old C-band satellite dish. And I'm making this video because there are still lots of these C-band satellite dishes around. And a lot of people have them in their property and they've been there maybe 20, 30 years or longer. People generally do not use these anymore. A lot of people don't even realize that these dishes can still be used to receive free satellite TV. So if you're looking for one, chances are that uh, somebody in your area probably has one they would like gone out of their yard. If you put an ad on say Kijiji or Craigslist, you'll probably get some offers from people to come and remove the dish from their yard. A lot of these can be found for free. And the only cost of course would be your time and your, your uh, labor. Some people may want uh, to charge money for them how much you're willing to pay is up to you. Um, sometimes people might think that you're collecting these dishes just to sell them for scrap metal. And I've always tried to make it clear to anybody that I get a dish from that I am a satellite hobbyist and I'm not going to sell it for scrap metal. They're probably more likely to give you the dish if you are going to use it for satellite TV as opposed to selling it for scrap and if somebody thinks you're going to sell it for scrap then they're probably going to charge you more for it so how much you're willing to pay is up to you I personally wouldn't pay very much for them and like I said a lot of people are just happy to have them gone out of their yards so if you're willing to look around, put an ad out, or maybe even be brave enough to leave a note in someone's mailbox, then you can probably find one of these for free or at least very inexpensively. First of all, there are three main types of C-band dishes available. There are solid fiberglass ones. There are solid metal ones, which are sometimes one piece. Sometimes they are put together in segments, maybe six or eight segments. And then there are mesh dishes. Uh, my favorite is the mesh kind. The dish you see on screen here is a fiberglass dish, which I have been offered before. This one is 10 feet in diameter. It is one solid piece. And these are very awkward to try and lift they're even more difficult to transport if you're using a pickup truck or even a trailer I don't mess with these so if you're offered one of these fiberglass dishes if you can find a way to get it home um, safely then go for it but these ones are not for me metal dishes are another type of c-band dish that I don't go for the very first C-band dish that I was offered was actually a solid metal dish that was put together in six segments and it was an absolute nightmare. I guess at the same time a learning experience. But the way that they are bolted together is from front to back. So there are a ton of bolts holding these panels together and they're bolted from front to back so it's very difficult to be able or if not impossible to be able to reach around and hold a nut while you're trying to loosen up a bolt and a lot of the bolts were seized it was a total nightmare to get apart and i did get the dish down myself i got most of the panels taken apart but there were a few stubborn bolts that i could not get and by the time i was finished the dish had a few kinks and bends in it and i decided that I needed to cut my losses so I took the dish straight to a metal scrap yard and got rid of it and I've never looked back um, the only dishes that I will find right now for me are mesh satellite dishes they are put together in a much nicer way as you can see here the bolts for mesh dishes are bolted through from side to side from the back and that makes assembling the panels very easy it also makes disassembly very easy as well so me personally i only go for mesh dishes the only metal or fiberglass dishes i could see myself 
uh, taking home would be smaller ones. For example, a four or six foot dish, but that's about it. If you can get the post with your dish, then that's even better. A lot of dishes have the posts cemented into the ground. You can see here that this dish has a post that is cemented into this pillar. So that would be kind of difficult to uh, take out unless you could somehow break the concrete off the post afterwards and maybe get that out of the ground, but that might be a lot of work. You can also see that there was two dishes here at one point and one dish was removed, but the post remains. Your options here might be to cut this post and take it with you or try to find a Another, another piece of three and a half inch OD uh, metal post or a satellite dish post with maybe a pyramid base that you can bolt down to either a concrete pad or possibly a wood deck, depending on your installation situation. When you're actually looking at the dishes, you want to inspect the dish for its condition if you have a fiberglass dish that has lots of cracking in it and it's all chalky, then you might want to pass on that one if you are looking at a fiberglass dish. Uh, same with a metal dish. If the solid metal panels have lots of dents in them, especially really severe dents, then that might take a little bit of work to get it back to working condition because too many dents could end up really breaking up the signal and that might make reception with that dish very difficult if you're going to get a mesh dish make sure the mesh is in generally good shape if there are some dents or maybe hail or dents from pine cones and tree branches falling on it most of the time those can be repaired quite easily if you have a mesh dish that has any uh, tears in the mesh that is something that can also be repaired and I'll be talking about that in a future video. You can see the dish here on screen. The mesh is in very good shape overall. There's a few little dents you may or may not be able to see here, but generally speaking, the mounting frame and uh, mesh dish here is in really good shape. So the better condition the dish is in, uh, the easier things are going to be for you, especially if you're paying for a dish, make sure it's in good condition. Uh, don't pay for something that's going to need a ton of work. Generally speaking, the satellite dish, if it's in good condition, and the polar mount and mounting post are fine to use as they are. A couple of things you might have to change or modify to get your dish ready to receive uh, free satellite TV in this day and age. One thing might be the actuator. If the actuator is seized, and uh, most of the time they seem to be seized, one possibility is, of course, you could buy another actuator, but if you're not w willing to spend the money for that, then another option would be to turn your satellite dish into a stationary satellite dish. And you can do that by simply using a piece of angle iron or some kind of metal angle or even a thick piece of metal flat bar to mount the polar mount and the dish at 90 degrees to each other and then you can just simply move the entire dish assembly uh, and adjust the elevation to tune your dish to different satellites that's how i use my C-band satellite dishes, I don't have actuators on my dishes at all. Generally speaking, I don't tend to move them around too much. I usually have one of them parked on 97 West C-band and the other one I will move around to make uh, videos, but usually I have it parked on 103 West C-band or sometimes 127 West C-band and that's about it. So you don't have to have uh, an actuator or dish mover. If you want one, you can certainly get one, but that's not necessary in order to get C-band satellite. The other thing, of course, and the most important part is probably the LNB, and that is this thing here that I'm kind of pointing at. 
on this dish. That part will need to be changed. The L and B, of course, is like the antenna in your satellite dish. That's what collects the signal and then converts it and gets it ready to travel through coax cable down to your satellite receiver. That will probably have to be changed because most of the old dishes had an L and B on them that has a little tiny motor called a servo motor that would actually turn the antenna 90 degrees from a horizontal to vertical to receive the different horizontal and vertical transponders that channels were sent on. Uh, nowadays, the L and Bs for C-band uh, have automatic switches built into them that will automatically switch the polarity for you without the need for a servo motor on the LNB. So that's something that'll have to be changed and that way you'll have no problem receiving all of the channels on a given satellite, both horizontal and vertical transponders. Another thing to watch out for is the type of LNB mount that your dish has. The dish you see here has a single arm that connects the LNB to the dish and that's called a button hook mount. Sometimes those can get bent a little bit, but they can be uh, adjusted to make sure that you're getting maximum signal in your, at your LNB when you set up your dish again. Most often though, you see dishes with four arms or struts that hold the LNB out in front of the dish. And normally these are mounted on the edge of the satellite dish, as you see here. This is one of the dishes I have set up in my yard. These ones are mostly common um, around here. You do see some button hooks, but for the most part, you'll see dishes with struts holding the LNB in place. Uh, one thing you wanna watch out for here is if you get a dish with any of the struts that might be uh, broken on an end or possibly bent really bad, they can tend to be kinked. So that'll have to be maybe straightened out a little bit, but most of the time those can be repaired uh, pretty easy or worst case, you can even maybe find a, a spare part somewhere. That's why it, it's a good idea if you can, to maybe get a couple of dishes, then you at least have some spare parts to put one uh, good dish together for yourself.